Hi, this is Nancy Ellen with the Crafty Yarn Barn, and in today's project we're going to be making some washcloths or dishcloths. This goes along with lesson two of my beginner basic series, Learn How to Crochet the Single Crochet Stitch. The materials that you're going to need for today's project is some cotton yarn. I love to use cotton yarn for washcloths and dishcloths. The cotton yarn is a natural product. It stands up really well to hot water, detergents, soaps, cleaning chemicals, washing them in the washing machine and the dryer. The cotton yarn is really sturdy. There's two brands here. This is Peaches and Cream and I have Sugars and Cream. It's a four ply yarn. It calls for an H8 hook or five millimeter hook. These small little bundle skeins, the yardage on those is 120 yards of yarn. Now I have these bigger cones. They do have a medium size skein that it comes in, but I like to buy these big cones. These big cones have 706 yards of yarn on them. A lot of color variation and solid colors as well available. I have this one in the back that you may not be able to see, it's a more of a natural color to it. It has a little bit of color variation, variegated. Also, I have my hook. I have my scissors. I have some yarn needles. These row markers, I love them. They're going to be able to help you keep your project nice and straight and square. First, let's talk about the size of the project. Check the comment section down below and you'll see the written pattern for this project. It's going to be simple to follow. The foundation chain that we're going to do is 32 chains. 31 will be the foundation. One chain will be your actual turning chain, the chain that's on the side post. And then you're going to come back the other way and do 31 single crochets. The height of the project going from row one all the way to the end will be 34 total rows. Once we do the height of our project, 34 rows, We'll do a simple border all the way around of single crochets and fasten off and end our work and then we'll tie in our loose tail at the end. Very simple, very easy and it'll be a quick project for you to do for your first project after learning a single crochet stitch. I like to leave a pretty good tail at the end, maybe about four to six inches long. Do my slip knot. Tighten it up on my hook. Make sure you have a good loose slip knot on there where that you can slide back and forth on your hook. And now we're going to do our 32 chains. I'll see you at the end when you get to 32 chains and I'll show you how to go forward and to turn and make your first row. Okay, we're at 32 chains. We're going to do a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Skip this chain and into the second chain from the hook, do your first single crochet. You'll stick it in the loop, you'll pull that yarn through, and then you're going to yarn over and pull it through both loops. That's your single crochet. Now you're going to do 31 single crochets into the top of every foundation chain on that foundation chain row that you just completed. Before we keep going though, I'm going to show you where to put your row marker. We want to keep our watch cloth nice and square, so I like to use row markers. That way I don't have to count every stitch and every row every time to make sure I have the appropriate number of stitches. What I like to do is to put that row marker into the very top of that stitch that you just made, the single crochet. You see where there's a V there? on the very top stitch. That's normally where you would put your crochet hook in to crochet another row on top of it. That's where I'm going to put my row marker. When we come back the other way on row two, that's where we'll end that row. That'll be the very last stitch in that row number two. So we go right into the next foundation chain, yarn over and pull it through. We're going to yarn over and pull it through both loops and go all the way down to the very end and I'll show you how to make your turn. And we're all the way down to the very end of your foundation chain. I'm going to do the single crochet in the very last stitch of the foundation chain. To make our turn, we're going to turn 
our work just like you turn the page of a book we're going to chain one then we're going to do a single crochet in the very top of the single crochet on the first row the very last one you just did don't crochet into the chain you made crochet into the top of the single crochet on the row one put it through the top of that loop yarn over and pull it through and then yarn over and pull it bo through both loops on your hook now right here is where you're going to put your stitch marker for row two so when you come back all the way back down on row three that's where you're going to do your last stitch on row three now we're going to go back the other way and we're going to put single crochets into the top of every single crochet that was on row one in the place that you put them is put your hook right through the top of the loop and when you put your hook through you're going to see the pattern on the top of that single crochet it looks like a V you have your loop that's on your hook already but this is the top of the single crochet there's two pieces of yarn looks like a little V yarn over and pull it through and then you're going to yarn over and pull it through both loops that are on your hook and you're going to go all the way down row two to the very end and when you get down to the end of row two you're going to turn your work chain one and then come back the other way to make row three very simple it's just like we did when we made our swatch when you were learning to single crochet I'm all the way down on row two now to my very last stitch on the row I'm going to remove my row marker and right where I took that row marker out I'm going to do my last single crochet so I'm going to turn my work chain one and do the first single crochet on row three right into the top of that last single crochet and I'm going to put my row marker back onto the project at the top of that stitch that I just completed for row three so when I come back on row four I'll know where to end my row I love those row markers the row markers keep your project nice and straight so once you get to the end it's going to be a square rather than a trapezoid I've done that a few times when making afghans and scarves where I saw that my project was going out this way or going inward and it was really wonky so these row markers are going to help to keep your project straight now what you're going to do now is you're going to do 34 total rows we've already completed two rows so you need 32 more rows and that'll complete your square for your washcloth or your dishcloth that you're making when you get to the end of row 34 come back and I'll show you how to fasten off your work sew in your tail and to make your border okay we're at the end of row 34 and I'm about to do my very last stitch in the row I'm going to take off my row marker lay it to the side and do my last single crochet for row 34 now that I have my last single crochet completed I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my work and the way that you do that you're going to cut your yarn leaving about a four to six inch tail and I'm going to yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop that's on the hook and go ahead and pull that yarn all the way through and we're going to gently tug on that yarn tail and it's going to tighten the yarn around that tail and it's going to fasten it off we're going to do a border around our washcloth if you decide you don't want a border all you need to do is on each end on your starting corner where we first started our project and here where we fastened off you can sew in your yarn tails and you don't have to put a border on I like to have a border on my um, projects it makes it look so nice and neat and finished so I'll go ahead and show you how to sew in your yarn tail and then I'll also show you how when you put a border on how to actually hide this yarn tail as you are crocheting around the project making your border. I like to use these plastic yarn needles to sew in the tails on my project. Look at the way that the yarn is moving down your project and I just work my yarn needle through the project where the yarn will get lost. When you're looking at the project 
you can't really tell that that yarn tail was there. And I'll just go back and forth and find the way the yarn is moving and I'll just weave it right in. And now I'm going to go right down the seam in between that yarn single crochet stitches and hide it right underneath those stitches and I'm going to come back the other way. And you won't be able to even tell that that yarn tail was there when I'm done. And it's going to look nice and neat. You can do this to both ends where those yarn tails are at. And if you decide not to put a border on, no one will even know where those yarn tails are. I'm gonna work it just a little bit further to make sure it's hidden well. And then just take your scissors and cut it really close to your project. Don't cut your project. Cut that yarn off. And you can't even tell where that yarn tail was at on either side. See how nice and neat that is? Now I'm going to show you how to add a border to your project. And what we'll do is we add that border. I'll show you how to crochet this yarn tail right down the edge of your project without having to sew it in and as we crochet down the edge then you'll never even be able to see this yarn tail. The way in which I add this new color and attach it as a border what I'm going to do is do a slip knot so I can put it right onto my crochet hook okay now what I'm going to do is take that slip knot off I'm going to stick my crochet hook through this top border and when I start my borders I don't like to start them at the corners I like to start maybe a couple inches down I'm going to put my hook through that loop put the slip knot on there and I'm going to pull that slip knot through that loop all the way through onto this side now what I'm going to do I'm going to drop my tail Therefore, it's just a second. I'm going to drop that tail and I'm going to have my crochet yarn. I'm going to have that tail just hanging down on the back. Now I'm going to chain one. Now what I'm going to do is grab a hold of this yarn tail and I'm going to lay it right onto the edge of my project. Right there on the top. And I'm going to single crochet all the way around this yarn tail. So I'm going to hold that yarn tail right here on the edge. And I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to stick it through. I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. And I'm going to yarn over and pull it through both loops on the hook. Now I'm going to continue to hold that yarn tail right there on the edge of my project. Put it through the next top of the next stitch on the border on the top of that row of my project and do a single crochet. And I'm just going to continue to single crochet down that row and stitch right around that yarn tail as I, as I hold it right on the edge. I'm going to continue to single crochet right down the edge of that top row while I hold that tail right onto the top and when I get down to the corner we're going to do three single crochets into the very last stitch on that row. So that corner, every corner is going to have three single crochets into the same stitch. So here I'm at the corner. I'm going to put my hook through and I'm going to do th 
three single crochets. That's number one, that's number two, and then here's number three. And I'm gonna make that turn. Now I'm gonna go down the side. I'm continuing to hold this piece of yarn tail right onto the edge. And when we get a little bit further, we're just gonna clip it off here in just a moment. But as we do our border on the edge, into every stitch of every row, we're gonna do a single crochet. So there should be 34 single crochets right down the edge because you have 34 rows. So we just did one, now we're gonna do two. And then here's number three, and number four, number five, and there should be 34 as you go all the way down number six. Right here I'm going to stop for a second and that yarn tail I'm going to clip it off. I'm going to hold on to the tail and I'm going to pull it just a little bit to pull it out and clip it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it tight like this and that yarn tail gets lost down into these stitches here and you don't even see that it's there. See? Okay now we just continue down our edge. We do a single crochet into every stitch along the side. When you get to the corner, down here at the end, we're gonna do three single crochets. We're gonna make our turn, and this tail that's hanging here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hold it right onto the edge, and you're gonna single crochet into each stitch down as you're holding this yarn tail right on this edge and you're going to crochet around it. When you get about halfway down or so, you'll clip it off and you'll keep going. In each corner, you're going to do three single crochets. So go all the way around and I'll meet you back here at the end and show you how to fasten off your work. Okay, I've come all the way around on my border and I'm at the end right where we started and we fasten off pretty much the same way that we did with the body of our of our washcloth. We're going to slip stitch right into the top of that first chain space that we made when we fastened on our new coil color. Then we're going to pull this loop through the loop that's on our hook, which is a slip stitch. So you're going to pull it through. And now we're going to cut off our tail, leave about a four to six inch tail on there, cut it off, lay that yarn to the side, and now we're going to fasten off just like we did earlier on our washcloth. You're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop on your hook and pull it all the way through. And pull it gently, tight, and your work has been fastened off. Now we're going to take our yarn needle and we're going to weave this tail right through the border here, hiding this yarn tail right into our project. I don't want to put this green into the body of my project or you'll be able to see it against the white. So I'm going to keep that yarn right there in between those stitches, right along the border. I'm going to put my yarn needle right into the middle of those stitches that's on the border and I'm going to pull it through gently and it's going to be hidden right in under those stitches and I'm going to go all the way around to the end and pull it through there and then I'm going to go through a couple of these stitches and go through the back and then I'm going to come back around the other way And then I want to go back the other way and get that tail in there really nice and tight so there's no chance of it coming out. Because with these, with this, I'm going to be using it a lot to wash dishes, clean counters, and I want it to be pretty sturdy and well made. I'm going to have it in the washing machine and the dryer and I don't want those yarn tails to come out. And once we sew them in, you're not going to be able to see them at all. It's going to be hidden really, really well. 
And I'm going to push it through there. And this is to be the last one. Get my scissors. I'm going to pull it tight like this where it kind of pulls up on the string there. And when I'm going to clip it really close. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my washcloth back out into place and it's going to pull that yarn tail right into that seam and it's going to be hidden and where you don't even see it and that's it look how nice and neat this little washcloth looks aren't you so proud of yourself you've got this accomplished and what i love to do i love to make these in batches of three and i love to give them away as gifts to people housewarming gifts, Christmas gifts. I like to put some ribbon around them and put a little note. And people just love these. These are so sturdy and they'll last such a long time. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Make sure you subscribe and go on to Facebook. Look at the crochet group for the Crafty Yarn Barn. And if you made this project, I would love for you to post a picture and I would love to be able to see your end project and your finished project of what you made. We'll see you next time. Happy crocheting and be on the lookout for new projects coming your way.